This screencast is going to show you how to make a histogram when you've got a bunch of data. So for example here I've got a bunch of particles and there's been some machine that measures the diameter. We want to visualize the distribution. That's what histograms are useful for. You can also get some information related to estimating probabilities. So you know, what's the probability that a particle will be between 1 and 2 microns? That's something you could get with this type of information. I've got a bunch of data here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name this. So let's do Control Shift down, and I'm going to name this up here in the name box data. So that's our data. The next thing I need to do is to count the number of particles. So I'm going to just use the count function. So I'm going to count my data, and we see that we have 230 items. I'm going to name this little n, so I can use that in subsequent calculations. Now the next thing we need to do is to determine the number of bins to put our data in. Now obviously if I had the bins really really small then I'm not going to really capture the distribution well. If you have too many bins you're not really going to see the distribution. If you have too few of bins it's also not going to look nice. So there's sort of a rules of thumb to calculate the number of bins for a histogram. As a maximum value, it's typical to use the square root of n. So if n is 100, then you know you might use a max of about 10 bins. If we use this second formula, this is kind of a, a lower bound, we take the integer part of the log base 2 of n. So basically, 2 to the what equals 100. So we can take the log base 2, and I think so 5 would be 32, 6 would be 64. 7 would be 128, so x here would be 6 point something. Then you take the integer part, so we're just going to use the 6, but then we subtract 1. So as a, a lower bound, we can do 5 bins. I like to do somewhere in between 5 and 10 bins, so maybe like 7 or 8 would be appropriate, but you could really use anything between 5 and 10. So let's do this for our data here. So I'm going to just kind of calculate the number of bins. I'll calculate the max here, which would be the integer part of the square root of n. So we're saying about 15. As a lower value of number of bins, a lower estimate, we would take the integer part of log base 2 of n and subtract 1. So that's equals the integer part of log of n base 2 and subtract 1. So we get 6. So somewhere between 15 and 6 would be a good number for bins, maybe a nice round number of 10. In order to calculate the actual bin boundaries, so the boundaries that define each bin of our histogram, we need to calculate the min, the max, and also the range. So I can use the min function in Excel, that's the min of our data, which is so the smallest particle that we measured was 0.14, the maximum then is 8.2, and the range is simply the max minus the min. The range is important now because this is sort of the span of our data. If we're going to put that into about 10 bins, then we could just say the bin size would be, and I'm not even going to put a formula in. I'm just going to say, okay, if I have 10 bins, then a good round number might be 0.8. Now, if you use 0.5, then that would result in about 16 bins, so that's a little too much. If you used something else, then that'll govern the number of bins. So I'm just choosing kind of taking this divided by 10 because 10 is included is sort of in the middle of my estimate for the number of bins. So that's going to be the bin size or the bin increment. Now what we're going to do here is bin boundaries. Now the minimum you see is, is 0.14. I wouldn't really want to use 0.14 because that's not a, a round number. So because 0.14 is almost zero, I'm just going to choose zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment my bin boundaries by my bin size. So let's just put in 0.8. And now what I do is I'm just going to create a series here down to um, a number that exceeds our maximum. So if I go down to 8.8, .8, then that exceeds my maximum of 8.2. All right, so these are the bin boundaries then. And I have 12 bin boundaries, but if you have 12 bin boundaries, that really means you have 11 bins. So we've got 11 bins here, um, which is right in the middle of our 6 to 15. So it's a good value. Now that I've got the bin boundaries, I can use Excel's histogram tool. So you go to Data, Data Analysis on a PC, and we're going to click on Histogram, 
click OK. Now the input range is just our data. So I'm going to type in data because that corresponds to all of our particle sizes. The bin range then really corresponds to the bin boundaries. So we put in the bin boundaries and I'm just going to leave this as a new worksheet. It's going to put the histogram data in a new worksheet. So I click OK. It creates the output. So let me just increase the size of this real quick. What we can see is that the tool counts the number of items in our data up to and including zero. So there's zero. And then it goes between zero and 0.8. There are nine items, nine particles. Between 0.8 and 1.6, there's 37 and so on. And you see it does that. So between 8 and 8.8, .8, there were two. And then there weren't any that are greater than that. Now what I like to do, remember these are the bin boundaries. In order to make a nice plot in Excel, what we really want to do is plot the bin center. So I'm going to type in a label here, bin center. And we're going to start with the second one because we don't have anything in the first, that first bin because that's up to zero. So I'm going to start here. This is going to be just the average of these two, so the two previous, I guess, which would be 0.4. So this really means that the bin with boundaries 0 to 0.8 has a center of 0.4. Then what we can do is we can copy that formula down. And really, it's only these data that we're interested in because the others are either below the lower bin or above the upper bin boundary. So I highlight both those columns. I go up here to recommended charts, insert recommended charts, and just the second one is going to be a nice column chart. And it's already got the data labeled, the y and x axis has the right numbers. So I'm going to delete the chart title, which I like to do, and then I'm going to add axis titles. Number, uh, click on here, number, and we click on the x axis, and this really corresponds to x which is the diameter in microns. So then if we wanted to ask ourselves how many particles were between, now remember this is a bin boundary, so this is between 4.8 and 5.6, there are approximately you know, 18 particles. So that's how you make a histogram in Microsoft Excel. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to, this is not a probability distribution function or probability mass function. So if you wanted to do that, let's just add in a a column here, probability, so that's really like f of x, the distribution function, all you would do is take the frequency of occurrence and divide by the sum of all of these. Make sure you make a absolute reference by using the dollar signs or pressing F4. So that means the probability of this first bar is 4%. And then you could do that. Now if I want to plot that, we can plot, I can hold down the control key and select this and I can go back here to insert recommended chart column chart we can put this down here and this then represents probabilities so and if you want you can label that so the probability of getting particle in the in bin with the bin center of 1.2 is like 0.16 or 17